RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Doing things for others is a great source of satisfaction, except when Phil Harris is the one who does it. Then things are better off undone. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. With a good old summertime just around the corner, it's time to start thinking about that great American pastime, figuring out ways to beat the heat. You'll find different ideas about how to beat the heat. Some folks take a train to the seashore. Some people take a cruise. Some fly to the mountains in Canada. But nowadays, more and more people are finding out that the best way to beat the heat is this way. In other words, by staying right in their own living room and finding that they can feel better at home with an RCA room air conditioner. The silent turn of a dial. It's that easy. You actually tune in seashore weather, mountain weather, vacation weather, right in your own living room. Or in your bedroom, if you choose, for summer nights of cool, restful sleep. No wonder so many Americans are buying the wonderful new RCA room air conditioner. What a great name behind it. RCA. What a host of features in it. The heart of cold compressor, the amazing climate tuner. And for the finest service and installation of your RCA room air conditioner, remember... RCA Service Company. Trained factory technicians will install your RCA room air conditioner. Adjust it, service it. Get an RCA room air conditioner early this year. Make sure you feel better this summer right at home. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Phil Harris. Most parents try to give their children all the advantages they didn't have when they were children. At times, this results in the child acquiring a wrong sense of values. Little Alice Harris is now going through that stage. As we look in, she's asking her parents to buy her something. Father, I'm 10 years old and I'm not being unreasonable. All I'm asking you for is a measly mink coat. <laughs> That's all, huh? You wouldn't settle for a stole, would you? No, I want a full-length mink coat. Something that will keep me warm from top to bottom. You keep this up and the only thing you'll have to worry about is keeping your top warm. <laughs> Because I'm going to warm your little bottom <laughs> I don't want to hear no more about it But Daddy, dear If you love me, you'll get me a mink coat And you do love me, don't you, Daddy? Hmm? Get away from me, you little gold digger <laughs> Don't pull that routine on me Your mother beats you to it, Blondie <laughs> Now, Alice, where did you get this ridiculous idea of wanting a mink coat? Well, I don't think it's ridiculous. You have one, Mommy. But I didn't get it when I was 10 or 20. Or 30 or 40 or 50. <laughs> Hold, it. Hold it, Clyde. Where do you think you're going? I was only trying to prove a point. Well, prove it with your age, not mine. <laughs> As I was saying, Alice, I didn't get my first fur coat until I was 23. That was almost... Two years ago. <laughs> Are you 25 already? <laughs> it doesn't seem possible. Time flies, doesn't it? Not with you at the control. Father, do I get the mink coat or don't I? You don't, so you might as well forget it. Very well. If you want me to go to school in a shabby condition, it's up to you. 
But there's one thing I need for school that I can't get along without. That's different. Anything that will help you in school, we'll get you. What do you want? A chauffeur to drive me there. <laughs> I'm tired of going on the school bus. Well, ain't that just too bad. Do you realize that when I was your age, we didn't have no school bus? Why? Wasn't the automobile invented yet? <laughs> Honey, the wheel wasn't even invented. <laughs> now that we're even on the age jokes, I'll go on. As I was saying, when I was your age, we lived in the backwoods. First day I went to school, my father put down his jug and said, Son, the schoolhouse is down the road a piece, about three miles, and you're going to have to walk it every day for eight years in your bare feet. Well, didn't that hurt your feet? I wouldn't know. I never went. <laughs> but, Daddy, if you never went to school, how did you learn to read and write? I was self-educated. Let me tell you the story of my life. Phil, Phil, please don't. I got a special version for children. <laughs> Very tender and mild and then... Never mind Alice, you're not getting a chauffeur Well, maybe I can struggle along Without a mink coat or a chauffeur But there's one thing I simply must have This is for my health Well, that's different Anything you need for your health, you can have What do you need? A swimming pool <laughs> Oh, this kid's got to get some sleep <laughs> Where do you get all those ideas? I ain't building no swimming pool just for you. Why not? You had a swimming pool in your house when you were young. Who told you that? Grandpa did. He said when you were a boy, he couldn't get you out of the pool room. <laughs> You're reaching, kid. You know, honey, I think a swimming pool would be a real good idea. It would be beneficial for the children, and we'd enjoy it, too. Oh, now I got two gold diggers working on it. <laughs> Regular and king size. <laughs> you know, Phil, I like the idea of a pool. Then you pay for building it. I can't afford it. Oh, come now, Myrtle. <laughs> Let's keep this believable. You got more money in one sock than the California bank has in all its branches. <laughs> Honey, you're the head of the family And it's up to you to pay for the swimming pool You have enough money I have enough money What makes you think that I... I'll get that What's the matter with this family? They seem to think that I'm made of money Hiya, Curly Ah, hello, Elliot Come on in What's the matter with you? Ah, it's my family My wife and daughter have an idea that I'm loaded Well, don't breathe in their direction They won't know that <laughs> There's another kind of loaded. My family thinks I'm loaded with money. They want me to build a swimming pool. Well, why don't you? Because it costs a lot of money. It doesn't have to. What do you mean? We can build it ourselves. <laughs> bum, ba bum, bum. <laughs> what was that for? This is a dragnet plot if I ever heard one. <laughs> build our own... Get away from no, me No, Curly, that's a cinch With me helping, we'll have it finished in no time I'm very good at digging holes in the ground Phil, who is it? The mole <laughs> What are you talking about? I asked you who it was Hello, Alice Oh, it is the mole <laughs> Hey, did Phil tell you he's gonna buy a swimming pool for the children? I ain't buying the kids no pool How can you be such a cheap father? Nothing's too good for your children Every kid needs a pool Keeps them off the street and keeps them clean at the same time. I keep telling you it's very expensive. It costs a lot of money. Hey, Curly, then I got an idea. If the kids want a swimming pool and you don't want to spend the money, why don't you get them a wading pool? Oh, you mean one of those collapsible jobs that you blow up? Yeah. Hey, that's a great idea. Them things don't cost much. Where do we go to buy one? To Grogan's War Surplus Store. He's got some very good merchandise. Let's go over and see him. Okay, we'll go over and see him. Hey, Alice, I'm going out and get the kids a pool. Well, it's almost lunchtime, Phil, so hurry back. Don't worry, I'll be back before you can open a can of tuna fish and sing two courses of It's the Lovely. 
If you want to go walking, dear, it's delightful, it's delicious, it's still lovely. I understand the reason why you're sentimental, cause so am I. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's still lovely. You can tell at a glance what a swell night this is for romance. You can hear dear Mother Nature murmuring low. Let yourself go, so please be sweet, my ticket thief. And when I kiss you, just say to me, it's delightful, it's delicious, it's delectable, it's delirious, it's dilemma, it's dilemma, it's delight, it's delovely. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delectable, it's delirious, and the night is young, the skies are clear. And if you want to go walking, dear, it's delightful, it's delicious, it's delovely. I understand the reason why you're sentimental, cause so am I. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delovely. You can tell at a glance. What a swell night this is for romance you can hear Dear Mother Nature murmuring low Let yourself go, go please be sweet my chickadee And when I kiss you just say to me It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delectable It's delirious, it's dilemma, it's dilemma It's deluxe, it's delovely Well, how do you like Grogan's war surplus store? He's got everything from the Army and Navy. He certainly has. Man, he's got a lot of good bargains in there, too. Look at that price list up there. Army blankets, $2. Cots, $4. Discharge papers, $1. <laughs> Dishonorable discharges, two for a quarter. <laughs> hey, that's an excellent buy. Six-hour passes, 75 cents. This is a buy. Just imagine only 75 cents for a six-hour pass. And I throw in four live phone numbers. <laughs> Each and every one of these numbers has been approved by the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, all and right, I am Grogan, an all right. Oh, it's you, Harris. What are you doing in my store? Grogan, I'd yeah. like to uh, buy something from your war surplus stuff. Well, you have come to the right place. I handle some of the best war surplus merchandise in the country. Now, uh, would you be interested in a sawed-off shotgun or um, perhaps a black limousine fully equipped with armor plate and uh, bulletproof windows and uh, revolving tummy gun turrets? This is war surplus stuff? Yeah, yeah, left over from a gang war in Chicago. <laughs> I don't believe that's what I want. Well, then, kids, you just don't have to buy it. Because I got a lot of other stuff. Just come over here and I'll show you what I got. I don't care what you got. I'll tell you what I want. I don't care what you want. You're going to take what I got. <laughs> now, here is something that you ought to love. Slightly used whack uniform. It's only $110. $110 for a whack uniform? Yeah. That's a lot of money. I know a place that sells them cheaper. With the wax still in it? <laughs> Brogan, I just came in to buy one of those rubber wading pools. Well, ain't that sweet? <laughs> Gertrude wants to go wading. <laughs> Tell me, Dom, would you also like a pail and a shovel and a handful of sand to throw at the grown-ups? Huh? Don't be a wise parolee. <laughs> Pool ain't for me, it's for my kids. Well, in that case, I got just the thing for you. Here it is, a collapsible life raft that the Navy used to use for landing operations. 
It's oversized. We'll make a great pool for the kids. Hey, yeah, that's just what I want. I'll take it. Good. It's right over there, all rolled up. Hey, it's uh, pretty heavy. It'll take the two of you guys to carry it. Oh, we'll manage. Oh, wait a minute. By the way, uh, how do we uh, inflate this thing? Well, I'll sell you a tank of compressed air. Better give you a large tank. You know, this thing takes a lot of air. Yeah. Hey, that's swell. Look, I'll take the whole works. How much do I owe you? Oh, don't worry about that now. I'll come over to your house some night and pick up the money. What night will you be over? We may not be home. It's better that way. <laughs> Just leave the second story window open and I'll take pot luck. <laughs> Boy, it's good to get home. I didn't realize a rubber pool could be so heavy. Hey, Curly, I can't hold this thing much longer. Where do you want to put it? Just just drop it on the floor here for the time being. There you go. Well, it's about time you got back and... Phil. Phil, what's that untidy mess in the middle of the floor? That's Elliot. <laughs> I mean the other untidy mess. <laughs> Why do you people keep picking on me? I'm a lovable chap. I'm nice to my mother. I even go up to the attic and feed my aunt once in a while. <laughs> You're a sweet kid. <laughs> hey, Alice, this is the rubber pool we bought. We got it at Grogan's. Oh, you picked a good boy. If, <laughs> if that thing holds air, it'll be a miracle. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going in to make lunch. Okay, honey. Ooh, lunch. Hey, Elliot, hmm? you know something? I think Alice is right. You know, you can't always depend on things that that Grogan sells you. Maybe, maybe we should have tested it first. Well, let's test it now. Hand me that hose from the compressed air tank and I'll attach it to the pool valve. Well, do you think we ought to do this here in the living room? Well, why not? Nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> Just let a little air in and then turn it off. Hey. It's starting. The air's kind of weak, but now you got it. That's it. Turn it up. All right. Hey, it's working now. This thing holds air all right. Oh, yeah. It's starting to get bigger. Yeah. Hey, that's enough. Turn it off. Okay. Curly? What's the matter? The valve's stuck. I can't turn it off. Well, you got to turn it off. It's getting bigger. It's starting to come through. Now, it knocked the chair over. There goes the table. And the lamp. Now it's going for the piano. It's got it. It don't play very well. Look, you've got to stop this thing. It's knocking the furniture all over the place. I'm trying to stop it, but I can't. This monster's filling up the whole room. Well, so here's your lunch. I made you a nice tuna fish salad and a whole bottle of beer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pushed her right back in the kitchen. <laughs> Tuna fish, cold bottle and all. Oh, Bill Harris, what's going on in there? Stop that thing. Stop it, she says. It's got me pinned to the wall. I can't lift my Elliot. Will you do something? Elliot, where are you? Right here in the fireplace. <laughs> Jumping right through the screen. Will you stop and do something? This thing is ruining our living room. Don't worry about it, Curly. It can't hold much more air. It's gonna blow up any minute. Oh, no. If this thing blows up with all that air in it, there's gonna be an awful explosion. Anybody home? My brother... Where'd he go? <laughs> he was here a minute ago. He... Hey, Elliot. Hmm? You think maybe it could be? <laughs> oh, well, here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't even wait till tomorrow. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, what happened in here? What was that horrible? Oh, no. Look at my living room. Phil, I want you and Elliot to clean up this mess before I get back. Where are you going? Back into the kitchen to finish making your lunch. I have to scrape your tuna fish sandwich off the wall. <laughs> well, I guess we can start by throwing that swimming pool away. It's probably ruined. No, it isn't, Curly. I was just looking at it. It just blew out in one spot. 
We can put a blowout patch on it. It'll be as good as new. Good, because I got some blowout patches in the garage. Come on, let's go and fix this thing. All right. Well, here we are, Curly. It's all fixed. You said it. Did a good job, too, didn't we? Yeah. We covered the blowout completely, and that patch looks good and strong as new. That'll never come off. Now, let's let a little air in it. Test it again. Okay, Elliot. In the living room again? <laughs> this time, you don't have to worry. I fixed the valve. <laughs> oh, well. Now, I'll just let a little air in to see if the pool's okay. There we go. Hey, Elliot, nothing's happened. The pool ain't inflating. That's funny. The air's going in okay, and... and... Hey, Curly, look over there where we put the patch on. Oh, no, there's a big blister forming there, and it's getting bigger. Elliot, Elliot, shut the air off. Yeah, okay, I'll... I'll, I'll... <laughs> Curly, you're going to hate me for saying this, but... <laughs> But what? The valve is stuck again. <laughs> I had a feeling that's what you were going to say. Look, you better pull that valve off. Look at that blister. It's getting bigger now. It ain't going to take much more air. What kind of a joint is this? Which one of you jikes shot me out of that cannon? Look out, Julius. All I did was come in and say, anybody home? I... He goes again. <laughs> he's flying better this time. Well, he's had a few hours in the air. <laughs> One more trip, he's ready to solo. Phil, Phil, what happened in there Never now? Never mind, just keep scraping the toner. <laughs> hey, we might as well give up, Elliot. That pool has got to be ruined now. No, it ain't, Curly. It was just the blowout patch that blew off. We can fix that. What are you, a couple of wise guys or something? <laughs> oh, you think me little fuselage can stand? <laughs> All right, now, don't, don't, don't get excited, Julia. Don't get excited, he says. <laughs> Every time I come in the house, all I say is, anybody home, I've rung the, there's a loud woman, away I go. <laughs> beefing about. You didn't get hurt, did you? No, but the lady across the street is sore at me. What for? I landed on a rutabagas. <laughs> well, I don't blame her. That can be painful. <laughs> the rutabaga bones in the back are very delicate. Fellas, tell me something. What were you shooting at me with? We weren't shooting at you. We're trying to inflate this swimming pool and the blowout patch blew off. Well, no wonder. You just can't put a cold patch on there. You gotta vulcanize it. You know how to vulcanize it? Sure, I got a kid out in me truck. Hey, you ha hey, look, I'll make a deal with you, kid. You help us fix it, and I'll pay you. Okay, I'll go get the kid. Hey, Curly, the gauge on the tank says empty. We haven't got any more air left. Well, it's just as well. The valve on the tank is broken anyway. Well, how are we going to inflate the pool? I'll go out and get another tank with a good valve. Oh, all right. Now, you stay here and help Julius vulcanize, and I'll go get another tank of air. <laughs> Hey, I'm back, fellas. Yeah, I got another tank of air. How'd you guys make out with the patch? I put a patch on here that's really gonna hold. Well, as long as we got everything, let's test it. <laughs> Elliot, hmm? You think we ought to go through this thing again? <laughs> Just once more for laughs. <laughs> anyway, we got nothing to worry about now. We got a new tank and the valve won't stick. Yeah, I guess you're right. Only this time, you and I are going to keep our eyes on this tank gauge. Right. Now, when it gets up to 20 pounds, we're going to shut it off. Now, it's just to test it, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'll connect it. Hey, Julius. Yeah? Incidentally, now look, you sit in the middle of that pool and watch that patch. If it starts to blister, yeah. Okay. You better open the front door. What for? In case I take off again, I don't want nothing in the way. <laughs> nah, nah, kid, you don't have to worry. Ain't nothing gonna blow up no more. Elliot and me are gonna keep our eyes on that gauge. Right on the gauge. You in there, Julius? Yeah. Okay, turn around here, Elliot. Yep. Turn it on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's going in good. Yeah. 
Two pounds in there already. Hmm? Four pounds. This is a better tank than the other one. You get it at Grogan's? No, no, I didn't have to go all the way down there. I passed the playground and some guy there had one. Playground? What was he doing with it? He was using it to blow up toy balloons. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> he gave it to me cheap. Who is he, Curly? I don't know. Wait a minute, I saw his name on that tank someplace. Oh, there it is. H.E. Liam. <laughs> uh, Curly, that's pronounced helium. Helium. That's an odd name. <laughs> Must be a sweet. <laughs> matter of fact, I think he is. I'll have to remember that. Fellas, just... strange things are happening. <laughs> What's the matter, Julie? Is that patch starting to go up? No, I am. <laughs> Fellas, turn that thing off. I'm floating up to the ceiling. Out, me little head. <laughs> Fellas, get me down from here. Hey, Elliot, I'll be darned. Look, he is up on the ceiling. Pool and all. Well, fellows, I got your lunch ready. And... Get me down off the ceiling. He is a popping from the altitude. <laughs> I mean, little nose is starting to bleed. Oh, Phil, Phil, get him down. From How there. we can't reach it to let the air out of the pool? Yeah, I got we... it, Curly. I'll throw this knife up. That'll puncture it. Watch it, Julia. She'll be coming down in a minute. Here it comes. Help! I'm falling. Well, don't stand there, Phil. Pick him up. I will, as soon as he stops bouncing. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Whatever your mood, there's music to match it in these new RCA Victor record albums. There's music for relaxing, for dining, for reading, and there's music for romancing, too. Played by the orchestras of Henry René and Hugo Winterhalter. It's mood music, recorded on RCA Victor's wonderful new 45 extended play record. And because these new 45 extended play records give you double the music for less money, they make the Victrola 45 a better buy than ever. It's the simplest automatic phonograph ever made. All play and no work. Just load up to 14 45 extended play records, press the button, and enjoy nearly two hours of your favorite music played through RCA Victor's famous Golden Throat Tone System. See and hear the automatic Victrola 45 phonograph at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. Folks, this is Phil again. United Cerebral Palsy conducts its annual campaign during the month of May. This disease can result in inability to speak, to walk, or to perform any of the everyday actions. Treatment requires skilled specialists and usually takes considerable time. With early diagnosis, treatment, care, and education, many of those afflicted can be helped to become supporting citizens. So do your part to help in the success for funds for United Cerebral Palsy. Thank you and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was Sheldon Leonard. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Now RCA Victor brings you the delightful orchestral music from Bizet's opera Carmen on new Red Seal 45 EP record. In this new Red Seal album, Fritz Reiner conducts five stirring selections, including the zestful prelude with a famous Toreador song, the rhythmic dance bohemienne and farando. Add this wonderful tune-packed EP album to your collection of fine music. Ask your dealer tomorrow for the new RCA Victor 45 extended play record, orchestral music from Carmen. The Harris Fay Show came to you transcribed. Next, hear Theater Guild on the air on NBC.